Okay, uh, hi, welcome to Jay's Speed Shop. Uh, today we are going to be replacing the Q screen in a 2013 Cadillac XTS. Uh, the screens in these cars go bad after a few years. This car has, this car is a 2013, this is 2020, so seven year old car, but only has 50,000 miles on it. Um, some of them I think go sooner depending on use and I, I don't know if it's impacted by whether they're out in the weather versus being barraged, etc. But what happens is uh, there's a gel between the layers of the uh, screen and that dries out over time uh, resulting in either a scrap screen or unresponsive. In this car's case it didn't crack but it started out as like three buttons in the middle of the screen so if you're on um, climate control, it was kind of the middle three buttons for selecting where the air went, you know, whether it went to your feet or defrost or whatever, stopped working. If you're on a radio, the middle three uh, preset buttons weren't working on the screen. And eventually, uh, it just stopped working altogether. And that probably started over maybe a course of a month from the time it stopped working on this kind of center area to where the whole screen went out. So what we're going to do is replace the screen. It requires moving the whole Q unit out of the car and then um, moving it to the workbench and then there we can replace the screen itself. Uh, looks fairly easy to do. I bought the replacement uh, screen from QScreens.com. I'll show you kind of what comes with the kit and uh, their instructions that come with it. They have videos online uh, for each vehicle. They use that same screen in all the Calic vehicles from this era. So from like 2013 up until um, I think 18 or 19 still they were still using them um, they changed the design to 18 so you have to be careful if you have an 18 up or if you've had a dealership replace screen in your car which i'm pretty confident this one's not been changed but the screen did change if the dealer did the the, the dealer doesn't change the screen they change the whole unit and the dealer charges uh, for wife for between 1500 and 2000 dollars to replace the unit you can do this screen replacement for about $130. Uh, there are cheaper ones out there. Uh, Q Screens does sell a cheaper version. It's not quite, it's supposed to be quite as good. I got the $130 one. They have an upper end one with a blue screen. I'm not even sure what that is. Um, I don't think this car had that. So I got the kind of the middle of the road. It was $132, including shipping. It was free shipping to, to get it delivered here. Okay, so this is um, to demonstrate the issue. Um, this is a Q screen from a 2003 Cadillac XTS. Uh, basically, the same screen was used in most of the cat, if not all of the Cadillac models of that year, um, and going up through the various model years up till at least 16, 17. Um, but what happens is the gel inside this screen um, dries up over time, and the screen stops reacting. So, initially. It was just kind of in this area of the screen. See, nothing happens when I touch it. Initially, it started out for a few weeks. It was just this area. So if you're trying to select a radio station, the buttons and the three buttons in the middle wouldn't work, but you went to the ends, it worked. Or if you're trying to select, uh, if you had this on uh, climate control, you know, whatever buttons were down in this little center, lower region would not work. Now, um, what we're uh, finding is nothing works. None of these buttons work. So you're kind of forced to use some of these controls, um, which can get some of the things done, but not everything. So we are going to show you how to install a new screen. So not the whole unit, but just taking the unit, removing the unit from the dash and replacing the screen. The screens uh, you can find online. Uh, I got the deluxe model, which is supposed to be a little bit better. It was $129. It actually came with some of the couple of the tools that you need to install it. So fortunately, most of this interior just kind of pops apart. Um, there are some a few screws uh, in the console um, that most of them are pretty easy to get to. And then once you pull the unit out, then it's there's probably I don't know a dozen, two dozen screws that need to come out to get the unit apart enough to replace the screen. So. This is uh, what we'll show you how to do it. It's supposed to take about two hours. Um, we'll probably go real slow and take videos, detailed videos, and give you uh, as much instruction as we can. This is basically kind of what you get in the kit. Um, comes with a new screen. I haven't opened it yet, um, but it's uh, it's the new screen. Uh, the $130 kit included the these two tools, which are used to pop a lot of the interior components out. Most of the interior components are spring clips holding them in. Uh, it was like $2 extra for this pair of plastic, uh, not needle nails, but uh, kind of tweezers, I guess. 
uh, those are used to disconnect a couple of the small uh, wiring fittings. And then, like I said, if you go online on there, uh, they have uh, PDFs you can print out or look on your computer screen, whatever. Um, this one is for the removing of the unit from the car. It's about 13 pages. This one is once the unit's out, swapping the screen, about another 13 pages. Um, the only other tools you really need uh, are a flat blade screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, and uh, a seven millimeter socket. So I've got a couple of sockets there. And uh, that's about it. It says it takes about two hours. Well, you know, it'll probably take me a little longer because it's my first time doing it. But uh, we're gonna get started here and show you how it's done. Okay, some of the first steps to get this done. First, you gotta get the uh, seats back because you gotta remove these side panels off of the uh, thing. You can go ahead and pull your uh, cup holder and a little mat that's in the center console and i'll go ahead and pull this one too I'm not sure if that one needs to come up but some of these are hiding some of the screws that we need to get to and then the side panel comes off with trim clips so basically use your tool that's provided That's the one thing in some of the videos I've found online is everybody's already, I already popped a couple here, but in most of the videos, people have already uh, popped a lot of these before they uh, start their video, so they all fall apart real easy. So I'm going to show you how it's really done, and I'm going to be very careful so I don't break anything. Okay, so that's the passenger side, and you can see it is just spring clips. It looks like they all came off good. That's, these spring clips are what hold it on. So put that one up on the dash. I'll come around and do the driver's side. side is complete all the clips came off good it's my only fears start breaking these clips but so far so good okay all that noise was me trying to put the car in neutral so just in order to have that, uh, allow that bracket to come back far enough, you have to have the car in neutral. Okay, so we got the car in neutral. I just ended up disconnecting the battery because probably a good thing anyway when you mess around with some of the electrical stuff back here to have it disconnected. Um, and I couldn't figure out how to get the beeper to stop beeping with the push button start. I'm not sure how to get the shut down. You just have to wait for a few minutes, but you get tired of waiting. So we're going to go ahead and let it uh, just be unplugged for a minute. Next part is we gotta pull the center console. This piece here. There we go. So there's their instructions are very detailed. comes off and then next we need to remove there's uh, four seven millimeter screws um, I'll tip down so you can see it but there's four seven millimeter uh, screws in the uh, 
inside the uh, center console storage area. They're underneath the mat. So if you look here, you can see one, two, three, four that need to be removed. Two more bolts here for this uh, center console storage compartment that need to come out. So like I said, there's the written instructions are a little bit different than the uh, the videos that they provide on their website. Um, I think the videos maybe it's a little bit faster way of doing it. So in the video, you don't remove the shift knob and you got, cause you, in the instructions, written instructions, you got to take this button off the back and you got to take kind of pop the knob apart or whatever. Um, so on this one, basically what you're doing is just pulling enough stuff off here so that you can shift everything back enough to, oops. Okay. So that's lost a screw, but I found it. So that's good. And then, uh, so once you move this up all the way, then you can get to the screws to remove the cup holder and uh, shift knob surround. Also need to pop the back. Of this uh, console loose. Basically trying to pop the back cover off. It's just two spring clips and then it kind of tilts back. that to step back just enough so you can get in there and you can find money and candies that are dropped down in the console oh there you go look at that it's made 25 cents and candy perfect and then the next thing is to remove these two holder and shifter mechanism but watch this one because it's kind of down in and then make sure we don't lose it there is one more that was this was the one that was underneath the uh, cup holder mat but I believe there is one more that I haven't found yet so we're gonna have to see where that last one is Guess is that this trim part needs to come off. So, this 
it's up all the way. So once this, you can get this loose enough, you can get in here and undo the last screw. And again, in this method, we're basically doing is shifting everything back a little bit, rather than taking everything out. And then we can get to next step which I think is going to be removing I guess this is an ashtray so the next part that's got to come out there's like a uh, I guess a finishing panel here above the ashtray and it's kind of a weird angle but it's supposed to just be spring clips and it's supposed to pop right out so Some of this is not quite as easy as the videos I've seen them make up, but most people, like I said, have already taken the car apart before they, and so they just have everything kind of sitting in place. We're showing this the real, real deal. So you kind of know what you're really getting into. I'm going to say this is the worst part so far. I think we got three out of the four have popped out. Let's see if we can get light down in there. This spring clip was just, for whatever reason, I think part of it is this whole piece is at a weird angle and you're trying to pull it out straight, but you really can't, it's angled like this, but it needs to come straight out. And I think once you get the other three clips loose, that last one's just twisted in there tight. So what I had to do is I took a long screwdriver and I just reached in and just pushed, you know, on the spring side of this side, pushed that down and it popped right out, it took like two seconds. So probably should have done that to begin with, um, but I was trying to use all the scratch free tools as much as possible, but that worked and it uh, just took a couple seconds. So I think the next thing we gotta do is remove the ashtray, which is another tricky part. I'll have to get the camera down here. There's two bolts that kind of face the front right here. So see that silver bolt up right above there is a little black seven millimeter bolt. So there's one on each side right above those. And those probably look like maybe like a 10 millimeter. But we're in the home stretch because the rest of it is pretty much clips. To get this thing out of here.
So there's the third screw that's called out in the instructions to remove the uh, ashtray. If you look, you can actually probably get a better view if you're just looking down here, right there. I'm going to put my magnet right there. going through the side here I got my magnets in the way I was just putting trying to put a magnet there so I could make sure I caught that screw when it came out but I don't think it's gonna work let me put it right there According to the instructions, it's just these three screws that have to come out. So, however, this thing seems really solid in here still. Like it should just, according to the instructions, you should just be able to grab this and pull forward. So the ashtray seems completely stuck in there still. So I'm going to go back to the instructions and see what I'm missing here. Okay, so got it loose. Uh, what there was, if you look at the back, let's see if I can find something to point at it with, but right there and there, the ashtray had a uh, spring clip that was holding it in place. So once I did that, it was able to, I was able to pop it out. And then, um, so you what you could do is you could have stuck um, kind of one of these down in there to, to try and pop it loose too. I was I just gave it a harder yank and it, it popped out uh, to seem like it was still secured by something. And saw that uh, in the written instructions, it mentioned that there were some clips in the back that you needed to help release the, uh, in the video, it didn't look quite as e or quite as difficult to pull it, but it just one good tug and it it came loose. So basically, what we're doing then is we're just kind of again kind of moving all this stuff out of the way enough that we can get into the next layer of fasteners. So I'm not sure. I gotta go watch the next step, but I don't see any fasteners down here. But you don't have to remove this. Uh, or maybe, oh, you know what, maybe what it does when you pull those out, maybe that's part of the housing that comes out with it too. So maybe this by pulling those out, it releases it. That's possibly a possibility. So we'll see what the next step is. Okay, the next step is we gotta remove these side panels. These are held on with spring clips as well. You go under the, under the chrome piece here. these side panels off. You gotta be real careful because it starts to mark mark the leather there. Um, is to grab it right here, these this tab here, and this little tab here, down here tucked kind of behind the ashtray. So getting those up first, and you kind of pull up on this chrome strip, and then the rest of it just popped right out. So look at this side as well. Get this ashtray out of the way. To get that little chrome piece started. The rest of the panel just kind of pops up. These guy kind of this past the, the ashtray.
There. So, the bottom corners are the trick. So next, you gotta remove this here, just the spring clips, and then. Basically, this has a little spring clip on each side, and once you get the inside one popped with the soft tool, then you just got to kind of release these with the screwdriver just gently. those. Now we've got to remove the switches. There is a very small tab. It's hard to see in this lighting, but a little small tab right next to the wire. You just pull back on that and then they come loose. So this one's going to be the same thing. Pull back on the tab. This one comes loose. So I can get the camera in here so you can see there are six bolts or screws, seven millimeter, one, two, three, and then three down the other side. Those are what hold the module into the car. So I'm gonna remove those and then we'll be able to disconnect. There's three wiring harnesses on the back. We'll disconnect those and then we should be able to remove this. So here I was taking out those last six bolts that hold this in and then once these are out I'll grab the camera and show you how to disconnect the uh, connectors oh, one more to go and this module should be loose. Okay. So real quick, I'll show you how I've been kind of organizing the fasteners too. Normally when I take stuff apart, I'll use bags and label it, but since this is going right back together, hopefully, um, I just took the piece of cardboard I put on my welding table here just to keep uh, the module clean and I put a pair of, uh, or a pair of, a uh, towel down too that will move all this stuff all the way when we bring the unit out of the car. Uh, but anyways, I just kind of put each of the bolts uh, by where they went. And then, you know, kind of in the order they came out. So when we go to put the car back together, we should go right up. Now, so far, I think all these fasteners are exactly the same size. So it doesn't matter, but at least you kind of know how many go into each section so you can remember how it goes back together. And we'll work from the bottom up when we start putting the car back together. Joel, one thing to watch, and I had thought about maybe leaving these switches on. The reason you have to take those switches off the wiring is the wiring comes through. So the wiring comes through this top hole on both sides. You can see the wire comes through. So you got the, when you put this back together, you have to fish those back through. So that comes out and sits there. Take this one out and just sit it up there. And at this point, we've got the module loose. We can shut this door. And then hopefully we can get to the plugs. Let's see how these work. So this one, it's got a little tab right here on top. So you should be able to just pull that tab. That one comes out. This one this 
when you push on this tab right here to release it. And then this one's got a tab on the top and a little tab. I'm not gonna see it from this angle. This piece has got a tab on the top and a tab on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is get the bottom one. Loosened up. These are the little players that came with it. And then we pop the back tab. There we go, magic. It is loose. Okay, before we get started, a um, couple of things that the manufacturer sends as some tips. One is there's some white flex cables inside the unit. They don't need to be disconnected. You shouldn't touch them. They're very breakable. So the best is just to leave them alone. Um, second is on the new screen, there's a uh, protective film on the inside. So right before you place it, you know, right at the last second, pull that off because that's a common issue. People forget to pull that off and then you end up with, you know, a funny looking screen because that's kind of half peeled off behind it. Um, this ribbon cable, um, this is also, you got to make sure you feed it through the right hole when you put the unit back together. And um, it just also very breakable. If you break this black clip here, then you're pretty much buying a whole new unit for, I think it's $400. So you don't want to do that. So you're very gentle when you pop that clip up and we'll show you how to do that. And it's on the qscreens.com videos as well. This one other item that's important too is to make sure you got the right model number. Um, right here on the back of the unit, you can see right here, there's a eight digit number. If that starts with a two, then you have one of these factory 2013 through 17 modules. Um, if it starts with an eight, that means you've got the new version that was installed starting in 2018. Um, and if your car, even though you might have a 2013 vehicle, if the dealer did a repair of this already, maybe under warranty at some point, and it was after 2008, after August of 2017, they, uh, they would have put the newer star module in, which means you need a different screen. The screen that is for the 2013 to 17 will not work if yours has already been retroactively or retrofitted, I guess is the right word, uh, with the newer style. Um, you'll have to get the newer style screen, which is also available. Okay, it starts the disassembly of the, of the module itself. Um, in order to get access the screen, you gotta take out these six, seven millimeter bolts. Nothing's tight on it. I mean, this, you know, these are all, so when you go put this thing, yeah, you should be using a, you know, four foot breaker bar or anything to tighten these things up. They're all kind of just hand snug, basically. And uh, honestly, I know in some videos, people use their uh, electric uh, screwdrivers or whatever. This is so easy to come apart and you're so at risk with one of those to crack the module, or crack the housing that I would just use manual hand tools. It's not gonna cost you more than an extra 10 minutes of work on this whole project to do it by hand. So I would avoid those power tools. Okay, with those off, we should be able to slide these side compartments off. They just slide down. You can see right there, there's little hooks. They slide down to those hooks. Set these aside. So now we have five very small Phillips. So these are what we call the lower screws. We removed the uh, the five lower screws. And now we have um, these, I think there's eight uh, upper screws and it's one, 
two, three, and then four, and then repeat on the other side. So those all come off. I already, have, I already loosened these up a little bit while I was waiting to get some video downloaded. Lift up a little bit to get those last two out. Screw over here. So just an easy way to organize these so we don't lose any, hopefully, in this last words. took a little punch and put holes in the cardboard and labeling them as I go. So not too many more to go. So that removes the back housing. I think as I mentioned earlier, they don't want you to touch any of these ribbons. Um, then now those need to be disconnected. I'm going to show you up close. You need to pull this small electrical connector right there. You can even see it. Pull that loose. That this part, the upper, uh, the lower, lower storage compartment comes off, and so that's got to be disconnected in order to get that off. And then next, we'll have to take. I'll put the phone back and the holder. We've got to take these two screws out. I'm sorry, not those two screws. These two screws. These two right here. These two screws are slightly different than any of the other ones. So far, most of them have been very similar. And then on the side of the unit, I believe if you see right in there, There is a, I'm going to do this so you can actually see what I'm doing. Yeah, all right. That screw right there, those need to be loosened up, but not removed. You see, I'm just kind of following the instructions that come uh, on the manufacturer's website. Uh, because now we're going to remove the last five screws that are holding the unit together. So we got to turn it up the other direction. So again, it's going to be one, two, three, four, and five.
Try not to touch the ribbons as I do this. And again, we're going to put them up where we have labeled. I think. We're getting down to the, towards the end here. We'll remove like, I think there's eight or nine screws that hold the actual screen in place. So let me show what I just did. There's uh, some tabs right here. It says that there's four small plastic tabs. So I'm seeing two right there. And then where are the other two at here? There we go. The other two are up here at the top. So one, two, three, four. And then our storage compartment is now removed. Okay. Next thing is to remove the ribbon cable. Let's see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. Bring this up where you can see it. Right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to pop this little black tab open and we're going to pull this ribbon cable out. That ribbon cable is what connects the screen to the uh, to the front of the uh, to the front screen to the main uh, unit. So that clip just very gently open that up. And then you just very gently pull that out. That's it. Now we have nine more screws to hold the screen in place. I think it's basically Oops, we're going to zoom this back in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the nine is can't see that, but nine is right here in the in the back. So we'll start with number nine. Part of the instructions too is when you go to put the new screen on is all nine of these may not line up and they say that's okay if it's more than more than a half or three quarters aligned go ahead and uh, try and put the screw in if it's off by more than that there's two but yeah, if you can't get all the screws to line back up, they say you're better off just, uh, as long as the alignment pins line up okay, you're better off uh, just leaving a couple screws out versus trying to force them because you could crack something. Each of these, see there's alignment pins next to each of the holes, most of them anyway. There's 
four. I think almost, I think all but two have alignment pins. And then maybe these ones at the bottom don't. Six. Seven. There's eight. Last one's up in the corner here. It's a little harder to get to. As that one comes off. These are magnet the grab it's there's our nine. At that point, our screen's ready to come off. So what I'm gonna do now turn this around this way. Another thing you want to watch is see where this alignment or this uh, ribbon cable comes through. It comes through right through the big slot. As this lifts off. screen. We don't want to touch this LCD screen underneath there. This is our old screen. And I'll pull our new screen out of the packaging. You can see it's got a film on both the inside and outside. We'll leave this outside one on for right now. So we're going to take, there's a little tab over here to peel this inside, maybe. Peel that off. Try to keep the dust off. And then we're going to put our screen Right back on there. I'm going to try and do it this way first. You can see that. What I want to do is make sure that this ribbon cable goes right down there. Hole. 
turn this whole unit upside down and just kind of start making sure that we're lining up with all of our uh, our pins. Put those two on. That one seems to be. There it goes. That one's on. So two at the top don't have pins. And on this side. There we go. Those three on the pins. Black one seems to be down good. Okay, I think we're on all of our pins now. We've got nine screw holes. Sorry, I'm sticking my head in the form. Looks like all of our screw holes. We got on the back. These four here look okay. So I'm going to do is get a couple of these started. And then I have to flip that door back up in order to get these ones on the uh, edge over here. But so far, it looks like all nine of ours are going to think line up again he's going pretty snug you don't have to over tighten anything highly recommend not using power tools on this this is all pretty delicate you can save yourself a few seconds, but if you break something, then you're done. 
So again, we're kind of showing you the real video, you know, if it fumbles by fumble five times. You're gonna see kind of what the reality of putting this thing together is, but it's not too bad. Actually, this part's a lot easier than actually taking the car apart. Taking the car apart's kind of a little bit more nerve wracking. This, the instructions are very clear. Not that the other instructions were bad, but this one was uh, very clear. So now, Bring, bring the score back up. that back up we can get to the rest of these screws but yeah these are all lined up pretty good I mean, a couple more off a little bit but way over half of the hole exposed so you know three quarters at the minimum so going right back together like it's supposed to and they said basically you know if you have to leave a couple of these out no big deal and then three more to go. These are the ones on the front corners, which are a little bit difficult to get to. I'm not sitting on the, okay, so that's a problem. Put it this way, the front of the screen's popping loose. I wanna These front corners are a little bit tough to get that screw started. If I'd use the magnet to pick it up a couple times. Just trying to get it to really. With tiny fingers, it might be a little bit easier. The other corner went better. It's all lined up there, just a matter of trying to get this. And this screwdriver is not very magnetic, so. There we go. Okay, now we have to get our ribbon cable connected and then we got one more screw up here, but the ribbon cable is kind of in the way. <clears throat> so if you look at the bottom of the ribbon cable, and it's hard to see, but you can see how the ribbon cable, this brown uh, cross here, has the ribbon connected to it on the bottom side it looks like the ribbon has got that copper colored ribbon and that needs to be down in this tab facing towards you when it's all said and done so let me see you want to grab it from this tab
blow this up so you can hopefully see what I'm doing. Basically, you're going to line that, get that in there as best you can. So I held it in there, set that little lock. Now, you have a couple tugs, it's, it's locked in place. That should be that. And then we can put the last screw in right here. Quite honestly, that one does not quite line up, so I'm leaving that one out. It didn't want to start. If I look in there, it appears to be off by more than three quarters of a hole, so we're going to leave that one out for the instructions. Okay, now we're back in the reassembly process. We're going to put the five screws back in to hold the uh, bottom compartment, storage compartment on. And just snug them up. Okay, next we're going to put these two into this bracket here. And then we have to reconnect this plug right here. I don't know if you can see that. Is that little plug. Pretty much lines up. You just got to snap it in place. It fills in really easily. Okay, now we put our back cover back on. Not really sure how this goes. or something like that. And this was eight of these. And these ones are more of a machine screw. The other ones are more of a self-tapping screw. So we got four per side. Well, you know, I put the lower ones in, they're all the same. I believe they're all the same type screw. Oh no, they're not actually. Oh, these are the ones. Okay, this is the right spot. 
other ones are more of a regular screw. This way we can see better. Two of these go on the side. You know what? Before I get too far here. You know what? We're going to take this cover back off. I forgot one step. There were the two screws that we loosened. but did not remove. And I didn't tighten those back up. So we're gonna go back and find those two and make sure they're tight. So it pays to read the instructions five or six times. Now. Okay, so we got all the uh, upper screws back in. Now we're going to put the lowers in. There's five of those. And then we'll be down to the side. Oh, well, there were five of those. Now there's four. Is that a strapped one? Got it. It's the downside of the uh, speckled uh, epoxy paint is you drop a little tiny screw like this and it kind of disappears. So the lower screws, there's five of them. Again, we're just kind of tightening everything up, just snug, I'm not putting a lot of torque on it. It's all plastic here. Don't want to strip bolts, we don't want to do anything. Okay. Now we're gonna put our side compartments back on. Let's put this back. Go ahead and close this door. I'll put them that way. Let these go up like this, like that. That seems to line up good. So we've got three of the seven millimeter screws on each side. Okay, units reassembled and ready to go back in the car. Got that many fasteners left to go, plus a bunch of snap clips, and we should be good. Okay, so we are going to bring this in here. We need to connect our connectors, which there should be three. Yeah, 
do real quick. Towel down here so I'm not scratching anything. switches on so we don't get error codes or anything for having these disconnected. I'll reconnect the battery real quick. Okay, so we're gonna test this thing out real quick before we uh, put anything back together. Well, that's a good sign. If this doesn't work, you will hear a lot of swearing in this video. Look at that. We have success. Come and go ahead and run video while we. Uh... Oh, I'm pushing the gold box button. That's why. Um... Run video while we put this back together. Um, but it's basically going to follow the same steps. I'll point out if there's anything unusual or any tips, I'll point those out. First, we got to route these wires. Each side back through that top hole. Just one through the top hole. And we'll lift our unit right into place. And we have our six seven millimeter bolts that go down the side. So we'll hold that in place, get those all started. Now I just need to remember. Uh, Which way I, uh, oops, I don't want that open. But it's good to see that it still works, so that's good. I'll probably have to refer back to the instructions a little bit just to remember the order that everything goes back together. I am stop. We have to go disconnect the battery again because that's gonna get annoying really fast. It's always a good idea to have the battery disconnected when you're messing around under the dash and where you could be touching wires and stuff anyway. short something out you learn the hard way really fast that how expensive it can get did that our refrigerator trying to replace something that screwdriver slipped and I shorted two wires and blew the main board so instead of a $50 fix it was a $450 fix or something ridiculous okay I'm gonna go disconnect the battery okay so next thing to do is put the switches back in Snap in there. Get the wires back through. Snap in place. And then this one goes on this side. Back through. The cover has five clips. So this has five clips one, two, three, four, and then one in the middle. I'll need to snap into place. Go. 
the dash pieces in. Okay, so I think the trick to getting these side panels in is same as coming out, coming out, getting it out from behind the ashtray, kind of this, these tabs at the bottom. Probably a little hard to see, but there's a tab here and a tab here that kind of sit behind the ashtray. And I think putting it together, you gotta get those to go in first. And then you can kind of go around and start putting in your other other connectors up into place. Yeah, that kind of all goes together nice. I had a little technical difficulty. I had left this panel hanging by the wire at the end, and when I got in the car last time, I knocked the wire off, so it took a second to figure out how it clip back on, but it's the wire for the LED light that runs, I think underneath this panel is, is where it runs. So there's, in this little gap, you see, you see the LED light sh shining through there. Um, so we gotta do the other side panel. Um, same thing here, you gotta get this, this tab right here. You can see that, that tab's gotta go behind your uh, ashtray and then uh, this tab as well has to kind of tuck under there. But if you get those in first, both on the way in and way out, I'm kind of working blind here. I can't really see. I'm trying to not mess with the camera stand. There we go. There we go. All back in place. So I'm just going to continue with the process of putting everything back together. The, uh, you know, one step I had done in the uh, trying to get the ashtray out was I took these two screws out over here on the side. Uh, there's two on each side. Those do not have to come out. So the uh, that was uh, this had to be pulled out a little bit firmer than what I was doing at the time. So this should just be pop those back two clips in, and then the three uh, three screws. Two screws to go through the front, right there. There's one. So we get these started and we'll come back and finish those up once we get the, uh, So we get this middle screw in. This is the kind of difficult one. Because if you drop it, you're gonna lose it down in the center console more than likely. So we're gonna look for a slightly better way to do this. So I'll just try and get some light down here. LED headlight on here. Hmm. 
Well, that lines up better. Okay, next is this piece we struggled with the first time around. So basically it's got four clips on it, you can see. And this bottom one, I really struggled to get that one bottom clip out, but it should go back together okay. Get them all lined up and then it should just be a matter of pushing them all in. That's good, everything works there. And on to the next step. There's only about three more steps to go. Next one is to get this cup holder kind of back in where it needs to go in. It needs to be closed for this. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, I see. Front sitting down. Okay, here. I think it's okay on the other side. Just this. There's a. Let me call it like a. The centering tab on the middle of the bottom that's not lining up, so let's go see if we can figure out what's going on with that. But once we get this uh, cup holder slash shifter lined up, okay, so I see that needs to go. See, we sing right where we need to be. So we seem to be way off, not way off, but off on our mounting point for this front. And maybe it'll, once it slides into place, it'll go, but it just does not want to go into the, uh, there's like a little stud on the bottom of this cup holder and there's a hole that's supposed to go in. But we are off about Let's 
as it needs to. There it goes. Oh, yeah, I guess that's it. It was sitting flush on the mounting points. Okay, just took a little, a little more force. Just being careful. So far, I haven't broken anything, I don't think. So, just trying to keep it that way. So you have one screw that goes into the bottom of the cup holder. Again, that was covered up with a cup holder mat. And then you've got two in the back here. One right here where it's easy to get to. And then one that's going to be a little bit tricky because you can't really get your fingers in there very well, but okay, I think we got it. Plug there, and I'll I'm not sure what plugs into that. Interesting to see how that uh, it says something on the bottom that plugs into that. Interesting. And then uh, the last one goes kind of over here under the shifter, right there. Wrench. Our shifter then basically has some snaps that snap in place. Shifter covers back on. And then the next step is to get our console floor back in place. like a connector that connects into something. So that's interesting. I didn't say anything about that when I took it apart. Stuff all Which, uh, this piece that plug doesn't go anywhere, just but this covers it up. This is the last six of the seven millimeter screws that hold this thing together, and the rest is some uh, snap panels. Okay, interesting. So this really needs to go. 
back more. Not sure what that was, but should have done that. Do two up here. And then we got four down the bottom of the uh, of the box here, storage box. One of those right there. Two of those right in there. And these will get covered up by the rubber mat that goes in here. There. Okay, so that's good. Just gonna put the bottom part back in. This is sold on by four clips. And leave it to slides. Have our back panel with the uh, with the vents on the back seat. We have the pop back into place. So let's put the lid down. And that's just kind of hinged. It has just two spring clips at the top, so that just pops right back up into place. Good news is I don't have any parts laying around except for the two side panels, which are the last two pieces to go on. And we'll see. I believe they go like this, right there. No. Right there, right there. <laughs> Pretty good. One more side panel to go here. Something like that. Okay, so the installation is complete. This is installing a new Q screen in a 2013. Uh, through basically, I guess, 20 um, Kellec XTS. Maybe 19 was the last year for those. Um, anyways, this is a 13. The installation went very well. It took me, I don't know, probably five or six hours, but most of that because I was filming it and narrating it. And um, probably if I was just working through it, it would probably just been a couple of hours, maybe three, because the first time I've ever done something like this. Um, the I bought the screen through QScreens.com. Um, they offer great video and uh, PDF instructions. The uh, there are some differences between the two. The videos seem to take a couple shortcuts uh, that make the installation easier. For example, uh, one of the items was the uh, in the instructions it tells you to remove the shift knob. And what they're doing in there is they're basically allowing you to take all this stuff completely out. Where in the video you just you undo the the base and just slide it back enough to get access to the next piece you got to move. Um, some other things I think they in caps off on the end of the dash they were asking you to remove in the PDF. They didn't do that in the video. I didn't do that when I did it and it worked out fine. Um, the so anyways the screen seems to work good. You know before uh, when it first started to go bad, these buttons weren't working. So. Anything at the bottom middle, uh, let's see if we go to climate control. I don't know if I can, it doesn't work because I've got the car off. I'm in the garage with the door down. Um, but I mean, the screen's working. But anything at the bottom, so if you went to climate control, 
Um, anything that was in the middle screen uh, didn't work. So anything that was down in this middle section, then that was for like that for a few weeks. And then it went to where nothing worked. So appears to work good now. Um, very happy with it. $130 and a few hours of labor. The one thing I, I realized after when you order these, they have three different versions. One's a base model. One is the premium model. One is a blue screen model. I got the premium one. The blue screen one was more. I didn't know, really know what that meant. And this car is a platinum. And I don't know if that's something maybe that should be called out in the instructions. If, if that's a specific to the platinums or if it's something else. But if I hold, this is the old screen. If I hold this one up in the lights and you can't really see it in the car, but out of the car, this one's got a little bit of a blue sheen to that. The black trim around the edge has a little bit of a blue sheen to it. Um, now in the car, and you can see maybe a little bit of a difference that this panel is a little bit darker looking than this one. And I'm not, so I'm guessing that this has maybe got that blue sheen too. So that's what I'm guessing I should have gotten was the blue one. But, you know, at this point, I'm not, I'm not to worry about it. It's not noticeable. No one will notice it but me. The, uh, if I ever have to replace it again, I'll, I'll do the blue one. But I think that's what that meant. So I'll have to look into it more if that's a platinum specific item. There's a lot of unique pieces on this car that's, uh, you know, because it's a platinum model, you know, the grill's unique. And I think some of the other interior trim is unique. Um, but works good and uh, very happy with it. So um, I don't know if GM has similar problems with other screens or just the Q that have problems like this. I'll have to do a little more research into it and see if there's other ones that uh, need to be replaced on a regular basis like this. But it uh, it works good. Thanks for watching. If you uh, like this video, please hit like and subscribe. And, um, you know, we'll just keep posting more stuff like this as we uh, get them done. Okay, so the installation is complete. This is installing a new Q screen in a 2013 uh, through basically, I guess, 20 um, Cadillac XTS. Maybe 19 was the last year for those. Um, anyways, this is a 13. The... Installation went very well. It took me, I don't know, probably five or six hours, but most of that because I was filming it and narrating it. And um, probably if I was just working through it, it would probably just been a couple of hours, maybe three, because the first time I've ever done something like this. Um, the I bought the screen through qscreens.com. Um, they offer great video and uh, PDF instructions. The, uh, there are some differences between the two. The videos seem to take a couple shortcuts uh, that make the installation easier. For example, uh, one of the items was the uh, in the instructions, it tells you to remove the shift knob. And th what they're doing in there is they're basically allowing you to take all this stuff completely out, where in the video, you just you undo the, the base and just slide it back enough to get access to the next piece you got to move. Um, some other things I think they in caps off on the end of the dash, they were asking you to remove in the PDF. They didn't do that in the video. I didn't do that when I did it and it worked out fine. Um, the, so anyways, the screen seems to work good. You know, before, uh, when it first started to go bad, these buttons weren't working. So anything at the bottom middle, uh, let's see if we go to climbing control. I don't know if I can, it doesn't work because I've got the car off. I'm in the garage with the door down. Um, but I mean, the screen's working. But anything at the bottom, so if you went to climate control, um, anything that was in the middle screen uh, didn't work. So anything that was down in this middle section, then that was for like that for a few weeks. And then it went to where nothing worked. So appears to work good now. Um, very happy with it. $130 and a few hours of labor. The one thing I, I realized after when you order these, they have three different versions. One's a base model. One is the premium model. One is a blue screen model. I got the premium one. The blue screen one was more. I didn't know, really know what that meant. And this car is a platinum. And I don't know if that's something maybe that should be called out in the instructions. If, if that's a specific to the platinums or if it's something else. But if I hold, this is the old screen. If I hold this one up in the lights and you can't really see it in the car, but out of the car, 
This one's got a little bit of a blue sheen to that. The black trim around the edge has a little bit of a blue sheen to it. Um, now, in the car, and you can see maybe a little bit of a difference that this panel is a little bit darker looking than this one. And I'm not, so I'm guessing that this has maybe got that blue sheen too. So that's what I'm guessing I should have gotten was the blue one. But, you know, at this point, I'm not, I'm not to worry about it. It's not noticeable. No one will notice it but me. The, uh, if I ever have to replace it again, I'll, I'll do the blue one. But I think that's what that meant. So I'll have to look into it more if that's a platinum specific item. There's a lot of unique pieces on this car that's, uh, you know, because it's a platinum model, you know, the grill's unique. And I think some of the other interior trim is unique. Um, but works good and uh, very happy with it. So um, I don't know if GM has similar problems with other screens or just the Q that have problems like this. I'll have to do a little more research into it and see if there's other ones that uh, need to be replaced on a regular basis like this, but it, uh, it works good. Thanks for watching. If you uh, like this video, please hit like and subscribe and, um, you know, we'll keep posting more stuff like this as we uh, get them done.